Hi everybody, Joey here again and welcome back. So it was just a little while ago we did a video called The Secret to Clear Aquarium Water. And in that video we discussed understanding what the problem is in the first place. I have to say though that some of us don't even give ourselves a fair chance to start out with. And what I mean by that is that when you're doing a water change, the water that you're already adding in in the first place might not be as clean as you think. For example, some people have high phosphates in their water, high nitrates, perhaps they have a high mineral content, or even dissolved organics. And a lot of people don't even know that because throughout testing your aquarium water, we never think to actually test your tap water. So I decided to come up with a project that would allow you to clean your water before it even gets to the aquarium. So you give yourself the best chance possible at having that clear aquarium water that you really do want. But we need this project to be really simple, really easy to do, and cheap overall. To deal with a lot of the problems that I mentioned, typically we use chemical filtration to do it. For example, activated carbon. Now activated carbon can remove colors from the water, smells, and even organics. And if the water flow is slow enough, it's said to remove chlorine as well as chloramines as well. Another very useful absorbent is actually zeolite. Now zeolite is able to absorb ammonia and heavy metals. It's actually commonly sold as an ammonia remover, which is usually just simply zeolite. Then you've got products like Fluval's Clearmax or others like it that are said to trap phosphates, nitrites, and nitrates. So really just by using a few simple chemical filtration media, we can absorb and or remove a whole array of unwanted from the tap water before it even hits your aquarium. But obviously we need something to put all of this in first. Now there's gonna be a number of ways to do this, but one of the ways I've decided was to go with PVC pipe. Although once you see how this is done, you'll be able to do it with something as simple as a water bottle. You can either use ABS or PVC for this. Neither one will matter. How long it is depends on how much media you're going to use. In this example though, I'm going to be putting 300 grams of chemical filtration in a 12 inch long, two inch PVC pipe. You only actually need to do two things. One is get a corresponding end cap and drill as many small holes into it as possible. And then put it on the end of the PVC pipe. You'll then need a small suction cup. The type that you'll find on a heater or even a small power head, one that you're not using anymore. The only thing you'll want to look for is that it has a small nub. Because we're going to drill a hole in the side of the PVC pipe and use that nub to stick the suction cup in and hold itself in place. That's pretty much it. Now we can stock it full of all of our chemical filtration. Personally, I like to go from the bottom, starting off with some activated carbon. Now it can be a tight squeeze, so you'll definitely want to push it in. However, a tight squeeze is exactly what you want. You don't want any water to be able to bypass it. I then follow it by the zeolite. Now, carbon and zeolite is probably going to be all you need to absorb all of the unwanted from your tap water. And a ratio of two carbon to one zeolite is, is all that's needed. The more you use, the more water changes you could do with this. And then followed by the, and then followed by the clear max, or if you need to add anything else. And then just simply add your cap back on. Now it's packed full of chemical filtration. Now there's 300 grams of media in here, and this will handle about 3,000 gallons of water. All you do now is place it in your aquarium and suction cup it to the side. Now when you're doing your water changes, you just put your hose in here and it will filter the water before it even touches your aquarium. Obviously you should rinse the media well before you actually use it. When you're done with the water changes, you can just get another PVC end cap and toss it on and store this until the next time you need it. Now that suction cup is actually going to serve two purposes. One, it's obviously holding this in place wherever you want it to be. Two, the nub on the inside actually protrudes even further into the PVC pipe, which means when we go to put our water filling device in it, that nub will hold quite tight up against it and make sure that the hose doesn't come flying out. The only thing you really need to watch for here is the water flow. If the flow is too strong, it might back up and flow out of the pipe and not get treated at all. So you want to keep an eye on that. If you are trying to treat chlorine and chloramines, the water flow has to be tremendously slower. Now you might not be as lucky with your water changing device being able to perfectly fit into there. You might have to remove the tube or you might just have to use the hose itself. And if you're just using the hose itself, what I suggest doing is 
just drilling a hole in the top of a PVC cap large enough to hold onto that hose. So now when we put it in, it fits in there nice and snug and doesn't get in the way of anything. So there you have it, a very cheap and simple way to treat the water before it actually hits your aquarium, giving you a better chance at achieving crystal clear aquarium water. Anyways, hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. I also wanted to thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next Sunday for a new do-it-yourself project.